All right, now here's a, a new type of problem. Here I've drawn a picture with a electron pushing arrow, and now I'd like you to figure out, is this a legal electron pushing arrow? Based on what we've learned so far about candidates for resonance, based on what we've learned so far about candidates for resonance, does this seem like it's a reasonable arrow? As always, I hope that after every problem I pose, you're going to pause the video and think about it for a second. Well, a good way to start is let's put dots in for the atoms that can participate in resonance. Let's put dots in for the atoms that can participate in resonance. Remember, these dots do not indicate radicals. We're not talking about radicals in this series of videos. We're just going to use dots to indicate who can participate in resonance. Well, let's see. It seems that the atoms that are involved here are this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon, and they've all got dots, so this is legal. If any of these atoms that were involved in this arrow had not had dots, then this would not be a legal arrow. So this is a, a good technique to see if you've got a legal resonance arrow. Um, start by putting in dots for all the atoms that can participate in resonance. Is this a legal resonance electron pushing arrow? Again, please try each of these examples with the video paused before you proceed. Well, let's start by putting in our dots. We don't put a dot here because this does not have any of these characteristics. And that means this is not legal because this atom here is at the head of this arrow. But it's not supposed to be participating in resonance. So this is not a legal arrow. You would never want to draw this arrow. This is a mistake because this head is pointing at this atom. Now, it's not pointing directly at it, but we know that we're going to be, this head means we're forming a pi bond to this atom. Well, that would involve resonance involving this atom. You're not allowed to do that. It doesn't have a dot. It doesn't have any of these characteristics. So this would be an arrow you would not want to draw. Is this a legal arrow? You should do all of these problems by beginning with the dots. Always start by putting in dots for the atoms that can participate in resonance. In this case, there are four atoms that can participate in resonance, and this is not one of them. But the head is pointing at this arrow. So this is not a legal resonance structure. Not legal. The head's not pointing directly at this atom, but we know that this indicates we're forming a pi bond to this carbon. So this is illegal. It's a mistake. You should not draw an arrow like that. By the way, technically what's wrong with this is that in order to form a pi bond, we have to have more than an octet at this carbon. This carbon already has a full octet. It doesn't have room for any more pi bonds. But we're not going to worry right now about why exactly the arrows are not legal. We're just going to say you can't have any arrow that involves an atom that's not a candidate for resonance. So we're just going to check whether the atoms are candidates for resonance without worrying too much more about the, um, the reasons for why the arrows are working or they're not. So again, this was an illegal arrow. Are these arrows legal? Start each of these problems by putting in dots. We put a dot for every atom that's a candidate for resonance. Every atom that has one of these three characteristics and that is bonded to another atom with one of these three characteristics. Well, every single atom that's involved here has a dot. This atom, this atom, this atom, this atom. They're all involved in the resonance, but they all have dots. So based on what we've learned so far, these seem to be legal resonance arrows. So this seems OK. Incidentally, this would not be a really significant resonance structure, but we're not worried about that now. We're just trying to tell whether the arrows are legal or not. Do these arrows seem legal, based on what we've learned here? Start by drawing the dots. These two atoms can participate in resonance. This one cannot. This atom has a lone pair, so it can participate in resonance. These two atoms have pi bonds, so they can participate in resonance. This cannot. All right, so what are the atoms that are involved in the arrows? Well, this oxygen, this carbon, and this oxygen are involved in the electron pushing arrows, and they all got dots. So based on what we've learned so far, these seem like legal electron pushing arrows. This seems OK. Notice, it's not necessary to involve all the candidates for resonance. We're not involving these two atoms here in these arrows, but that's OK. What's important is that none of the atoms that are involved can be non-candidates for resonance. We can only be using atoms that are candidates for resonance, but we don't have to use all of those. Does this arrow seem legal? 
let's start with the dots. This is the same example I gave you before. So the dots all go in the same places. Again, remember these dots do not represent electrons. They're just dots to show the candidates for resonance. Well, this arrow has a tail on this oxygen. That's fine, because it's got the dot. But this head is pointing towards this carbon. And the carbon doesn't have a dot. This carbon is not a candidate for resonance. So this is an illegal arrow. This arrow is illegal. We're not allowed to use this arrow. Um, now, of course, this head is not pointing directly at this carbon. Um, but this head is forming, trying to form a new pi bond that would involve this carbon. But the carbon here is not allowed to form any resonance structures. Um, it doesn't have any of these characteristics. So this would be an illegal arrow. Determine whether this seems like a legal electron pushing arrow. Let's start by putting in our dots. Everywhere there's a pi bond gets a dot. We know that carbocations get a dot. And we know this oxygen has a bunch of lone pairs, so it gets a dot. Does this carbon get a dot? No way. There's no reason to put a dot on this carbon. There's no reason to think that this carbon has any lone pairs. Remember, how do you know when a carbon has a lone pair? It has a negative charge. This is an important point. If you didn't know this, you should make a note. Um, generally speaking, um, a carbon with a lone pair is one that has a negative charge. No negative charge, then uh, generally speaking, it's not going to have any lone pairs. Uh, so there's no lone pairs here. Um, remember that there's just a hidden hydrogen that we haven't shown. Uh, if it's not clear to you that this carbon has a full octet and no lone pairs, um, it's not a carbocation, um, then you kind of need to go back and work more on bond line notation. You have to have some basic skills with bond line notation before it makes sense for you to try resonance structures. So if you're really struggling with the bond line notation here, you should probably just put these videos to the side for a while and just really do a bunch of practice just with understanding bond line notation, which should be covered in the first chapter of your OCHEM text. All right, so I'm assuming that it's obvious to you guys that this carbon has no lone pairs, obviously it has no pi bonds, and obviously it's not a carbocation. This is what a carbocation looks like. It has to have a positive charge. Uh, okay, so there's no dot here, which means that this is not a legal resonance arrow. This is not legal because this head is involving this carbon. Again, even though it's not pointing at it directly, this head means that we're supposed to form a new pi bond. A new pi bond that involves this carbon, but this carbon is not a candidate for resonance. So this is an illegal resonance error. 